All right, so we've got some footage submitted to us here. This is a series where we look at some PvP footage people send in. You guys are welcome to do so, and I'll just provide some commentary on it. See where you, I think you did good, where you did bad. I'm um, not the best player in the world, but hopefully we can uh, learn some stuff together. Should be fun. Uh, so this is a Guardian game, obviously. We're on Legacy. The build looks really weird to me straight away. Just looking at the utility skills. Like, first, I, you would think, okay, this is a support firebrand. But he's running the mantra of, I think this is called Truth, which is like the DPS mantra, which is okay, by the way, sometimes in very specific scenarios, uh, even on a support, right? Like if you're in a, like a really refined 2v2 scenario, that mantra can be the extra pressure you need to swing some uh, particularly difficult 2v2s. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what he's got. He's got save yourselves as well. Con contemplation of purity combo, which is interesting. You basically mass cleanse your, your team and then swap all the conditions you get you grabbed into boons, which further compound with the boons that save yourselves gave you. It's like a classic combo. Uh, I can't say I've ran for years. So we need to see his build panel and know more of what's going on. Okay, so actually I see someone in chat saying that they're playing hybrid. So let me just be clear at the start of this video, I've never really played this variant of hybrid firebrand. So uh, I do think it's a strong concept for ranked though. Anything that can do like a lot of jobs is a really good all-rounder. And I mean a really good all-rounder can definitely be nice. Um, because what it allows you to do is take the 1v1 or support people at the team fight or pressure at the team fight, whatever, right? Like, so I like the idea. So yeah, we can see Axe Shield here. This is a really good combo on any kind of like aggressive fire round build. You can knock someone away, pull them back in, and uh, there's lots of good CC on there. The symbol does lots of damage. The autos do lots of damage. Um, agility as well for the quick cast like Shield 5 or Axe 3. It's kind of nice. Annulment, obviously, for boon ripping stabs to land your CCs. Not sure what sigil this is. I hope he mouses over this sigil. I don't know what that is. What's that one on the staff there? Energy. Oh, and purging. This is what purging looks like. Interesting. It's like a person breathing. Um, purging or cleansing, you know, it's whatever. I kind of like the idea of purging on a staff because there are lots of little packets you get to do, uh, which will trigger the condition removal. I don't know how campy on staff you end up as. Mousing over the amulet. I think this is the only, like, really good amulet for a hybrid firebrand. You've got vitality on there, which means you're not going to instantly explode. You've got healing power, which means you get that support value. And then power precision, so you can actually do damage. And those are the highest stacks. So I really like Avatar. I like the idea of Avatar firebrand. And then he's not going to mouse over this, but this is a flock rune, I'm pretty sure. Uh, which is more heals. Uh, it's also one of those runes with the recent change that gives you another 10% maximum health, which compounds with the vitality you get from Avatar. That's why he's all the way up to 20k. And I actually like that. I think it even has just straight up vitality on it on Flock as well. Uh, you also get like an extra packet of heal every time you use uh, a heal skill. And Mantra has synergy on there. So, you know, you find some support uh, firebrand, like pure support firebrands on Flock. I like the idea of running Flock here. As for traits, we can see he's zeal and honor, right? Uh, but I'm pretty sure, isn't this symbolic Avenger? This is the new patch, right? Uh, th this is specifically what's buffed, but this is more damage. These are your symbols are bigger and heal. It's like a symbol build, which is interesting because on the recent build zoo, this was one of the like concepts I was messing around with. This uh, concept though that they're playing, I'm pretty sure is established long before the recent balance, but I'm interested to see how it changed. This is a pretty interesting decision here as well. Um, take it, this axe trait is really strong. I really like it. It loads even more CC onto the axe shield set. Like there's just so much CC there now. And obviously compounding the symbol that the two is giving and stuff. But um, it means you get less tome pages. So this is an interesting, I mean, we don't have to look at the whole build. Let's just see the gameplay. Uh, it will be interesting uh, doing some commentary on some footage of a build that I've never really actually played very much. So we'll see how it goes. Looking at the compositions. It seems a bit weird to me. He's got a uh, another firebrand. If that's pure support, I mean, is the overlap a problem? Hopefully not. There's a scourge. He's got a uh, herald that can burst out a lot of damage, and he's got a uh, spellbreaker. So I wonder whether you would play this quite. You'd be like one of the guys that stays on the node, right? If this is firebrand scourge combo, if that's a natural support firebrand, you're probably going to look for like this guy pushing far or holding close or whatever. These three win team fights, and then you hold whatever node until they swing back later. Maybe that's how I would be thinking as I started this game. Casting the mantras, getting the symbol of swiftness up at the start of the gate. That will make sense. That's all fine. Not much else to do here. Um, looking to see uh, what their their comp is. I haven't actually looked at that just yet. Um, so yeah, look, he's even opening the panel. He's thinking right now probably about exactly what's going to attack him. Could be getting jumped on by this combo down here. 
Uh, wondering what target he wants to take. That actually looks like a pretty intimidating power mid. I like the star five here. Casting on himself just in case there's a big port. The idea of getting the symbol down as well. Um, and maybe an empower on the, t the allies early is nice. Get the symbol of swiftness up as well and they start fighting on it. Immediately into F1. He's looking for aggression. I think that that's fine. Drops this to cast it on some allies. And... Um, has the four back here. Already good damage going, guys. Already good damage. I like this a lot. Uh, being very slow and pacing out these mansions, not going too crazy with them. I don't think you get much value out of save yourselves this game, are you? Uh, at least in terms of the condi element. Obviously, a ton of boons is very nice. Uh, the stun break missing with the axe three and then the symbol, but sometimes it can't be helped. Oh, that was really nice. Knocked a signet of mercy here as well. So I actually really, really like that. If we rewind slightly, you'll see here he's got target on enemy support firebrand. A down state appears here, and he's positioned himself just right because he knows that this Reaper's going to be low. And then as soon as the down state appears, I actually think this was too fast. To be honest with you, I don't think he was... Uh, I don't think that was necessarily a good play. I think he just reactively knocked the Guardian here. I did not have time to see that Signet appear. You could anticipate that he's going to Signet, but I would wait until I see the icon, right? And then I would knock. This actually ended up working perfectly. Um, and you might even say that doing it so fast is the best thing because most firebrands will cover their signet of mercy cast with stab and you can only break through so much or whatever, right? It's not like you're a thief and you can steal into it or you're a necro that can corrupt boon or whatever. Uh, harassing the firebrand very heavily um, while not worrying too much about the node back there because the warrior's got that job. Uh, and moving to staff as you anticipate he creates a gap. This is actually getting really dangerous. I would not chase this anymore. You can already see one respawn, but this one's about to reappear. It's really important to kill this Firebrand, right? Because you want these two players staggered, generally. Or, or any of the DPS staggered from the Firebrand. You don't want them to just die together and respawn together and then nothing really changes. What you want is to keep them split up. So definitely killing this now is a brilliant kill if they can get it. But I don't know. I, I, I feel scared about pushing forwards here. And I also... I'm not aware of what's going on behind. I know that our Scourge is dead, and I feel like we could have helped that already. And I'm worried that, you know, that the node behind us is going to go south. So I'm concerned with this. So let's see if he pushes. He, 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 just like me, he chooses not to push. He looks back at this hollow, which I think is important. It's really important to get this kill very quickly now as well. Thankfully, we've had victory over on far, which is very nice. Um, and relieves you of a lot of the pressure. Staying back for the node is good while letting that other guy push. Uh, I'd probably move to meet with this guy and give him the five next and I'd wait for another little bit of CC He drops out of the tome altogether. I would stand here and empower to heal this guy through the wall Maybe drop a staff two around the corner Especially with the Reaper there I'd want the staff five on that so that the guy can kite backwards and forwards to it. I'd also drop some of these isn't there weakness on this I might be wrong about that mantra um, But yeah, instead we just let the guy die. I think we played too passive there. I think that was too slow and also with the Firebrand returning with his Mercy still up, I actually think this is a lost engagement now. And I would be very cautious about staying. And again, I don't know how much support this really has or CC potential. Goes for a res. I think that was a waste of time. I think uh, we, we pull back the line here. I'm amazed that the enemy team hasn't gone deeper right now. I don't know why the enemy team hasn't done that. I think that maybe plussing this back here, let them neutral... I mean, here's the problem. I'm scared of my Scourge dying. And I do have a Scourge, right? And we have support. So maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe we can actually resustain. It's obviously our node. So fighting on it is, is fine for now. Everyone's healthy. No one's on respawn. <clears throat> I'm just concerned that this is going to go badly. I mean, we're very immobile on this build. So staying with the big fight is obviously smart. The Scourge got bodied as we kind of supported the wrong, wrong target. That doesn't feel too good. Uh, we've already blown save yourselves. We have no contemplation of purity. Now we start dying. I think with the Scourge dead. Yeah, I was never confident in this team fight basically. And the problem with a build like this is it's kind of hard to like, once you're stuck on a node, and right, it's legacy, it's a big node, you kind of want to fight for it, but once you're stuck on it, it doesn't look good. And like I said, this 1v1 as well has gone badly over here. So now we've lost the entire map. Uh, luckily nobody's been bled. Well, actually our firebrand has been bled, so that doesn't feel very good. Uh, on respawn, I would probably look for close. 
I would stick with my Necromancer. I wouldn't risk him and whatever 1v1 that is. Whoever's just won this is going to want to stay at Waterfall. I think that this has to be... This is the only rotation in the game that I would ever take. I wouldn't push for stalling this neutral or whatever. The Revenant has enough mobility and stuff to disengage. You're only two players on the board right now. Because the Revenant's really low and kiting, right? Two of you guys are dead. I think that this Necro is going to get spawn camped unless I go with him. I wouldn't take this middle gate here. I think this is a misplay. Getting the matches up, though. Obviously a good idea. Try and meet with the Rev if you could was also an idea-ish, but the Rev's already dead. I would about face. I wouldn't. Th there's no chance you're ever going to get this node. There's no chance you're ever going to get this node. I'd go back in the gate. Even now, I would still turn around and I'd look to regroup with my Necromancer. That is what I would do. I'm amazed that they're not killing you. Uh, they're not playing very aggressive. You, you now as well, you've been get handed a silver platter here. So I would be looking for the, the decap already. The swiftness is kind of awkward. One thing I hate about this build, by the way, is how slow it is. I'm always tempted to, like, F3 and burst out. Okay, I've never played this exact variant of hybrid firebrand, but when you play, like, certain DPS-y firebrands, the swiftness is always annoying. I'm always tempted to go, like, um, F3 and spam out auto attacks or something, but then you use such a powerful time just on such a stupid thing. Anyway, so there's two here. I would be targeting this guy at the back to see what kind of projectile damage it has or what the class is. Um, so that I know whether I can, uh, whether I have to like line of sight straight away. I wouldn't be standing on the front lip of this. I'd be standing on the back. I think this is a necromancer in front, but again, no targets. I feel bad. All right, it's a revenant. I'd walk back to, we're at quarry, the no port right now. And I'd put a star five on myself. I wouldn't kite this. I'd take the 1v1. Um, you're looking to support this guy over here. Which I don't know whether I necessarily agree with. I think he could maybe get out on his own or he could kite back. I don't think you've really been of any value. You're playing like a thief right now. Uh, but just you're too slow. You're not going to get this. I think the 1v1 on the rev was the right way to play this here. I think the empower save yourselves wasn't a very good opening. I think I would be kiting right now as well. You're dead, right? This you're dead. Let's just be articulate everything. You are not surviving this. You need to kite. I would be around on the mausoleum up here probably. Also, you're zero value standing on the node, so you have the freedom to do whatever you want. I don't like this kite spot very much. I don't think the line of sight is very good. You survived better than I, th than I thought you would. The, the builder clearly has more resane than I expected. Get the head out of the ghastly breach as soon as possible. You walk back into the ghastly breach. Even with an evade, it's kind of concerning. You, you, the, you were too... Obviously... Okay, so what has happened here is you pushed the line just a little bit early before your team could do anything. So your your enemies, you could have taken a team fight there, but your enemies kind of had a key to the to the win in that you were already pressured and low. I'm hoping for a mercy from your firebrand right now. If he's even running it, I don't know. I mean, didn't we see he's in a great sword? Is he hybrid as well? I'm not sure. Uh, I must admit, I'm blind to how you ended up with the waterfall here. So anyway, you've lost this in the two cap. Uh, three players dead again. Realistically, this is a scenario, again, where you want a good regroup. And the enemy team's kind of handed it to you because they've stomped you all out. If I was on the enemy team there, I would have on node bled at least one of those guys. I would have AFK'd on the node just to keep the stagger nice and strong. Your warriors come down here. Uh, your scourge is going to die. So this is actually a difficult moment for me. I would wait. I would stay AFK until I see the uh, Revenant, and I would push out with the Revenant, wherever the Revenant chooses to go. I wouldn't walk here. I feel like you're going to die if you come here. Luckily, your Guardians come with you, so that increases your odds massively. We're watching your Revenant as well to see where he goes right now. We're also taking target on this to see. Okay, so it's hollow. I'd walk forwards. I'd be ready to prime a dodge for the instant uh, uh, knockback overcharge shot. You um, uh, empower out of range. What he's going to do is auto to break your Aegis and then overcharge shot. You ready for it? So he lets you get on node. He doesn't do anything. Okay, he Coronas deliberately. Okay, I, I don't know. Wait, what rating is this? Okay, so he Coronas into Aegis. It doesn't really do anything. He doesn't take the free pressure on you. So you get on node. This is really nice. You get your star five up. You get uh, F1 up. I think this is all really good. You prioritize the four. I really like the mechanics here. I would have walked back into my staff a little bit more. You did get the uh, knockdown, at least one there. I would have dodged, by the way, the second tick of Corona to deny this. Uh, that would have been really important. You dodged the five there. Probably looking for Aegis on that, though, instead. Or maybe a Mancha proc. 
Um, you actually have a lot to do with this hollow. And good, your rev did come with you. So everybody's regrouped here. You should win this fight and get back in the game. So this is nice. This is looking good for your team. You, you're actually about to crack the enemy's snowball on Legacy, which is great. I'd get the three up. You cancel cast it. The two wasn't very good. You do actually need to hit someone with it to, 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 to get the Aegis out of it. You drop the F3 because you realize it's a bit superfluous. I think you've moved off the node too aggressively here. You weren't needed here. I would have been on star free casting. You're leaving it completely neutral. And you're leaving your rev to cap. That's a big misplay. I would let the rev push up. I would keep. I would hold the node here. That rev is going to be feeling really bad that you did that, I think. Star 5 I wouldn't do just yet. You've got like the precast. You're holding it. You know it's a powerful tool, which I really like. But I think that you're a little bit early with it. Um... Yeah, you got the symbol up on him. That's good. Again, you're missing free cap opportunity here. You're you're very node lossy here. I, I mean, there's certain things. You've got 1,200 range. You'll be okay. I would have opened with the five there and tried to tag that guy with it instead of the four. They're not jumping in on you just yet. This is scepter damage, right? So uh, do you have any tools to deal with that? Probably not. I just kite and move to the other side. This is really important because the enemy team's going to notice that in a second and you want to bomb in with this. I would hold this last charge. I would not spend this. You instead do it here. I would have put it on the body. You would have got all the, the value out of that. The symbol on the platform, on the body is really nice though as well. The double, the CC, the annulment CC was really good. Actually, let's rewind that because that will be beautiful to watch. I really like your mechanics if you know the build well enough for that. Okay, so what we do is we see the weapon swap. Okay, you, you never got the... Oh, maybe maybe I'm too late already. I don't know. You might have annulment uh, CC'd there though, which would have been really cool. You got the pressure on that anyway, but here you've left this guy vulnerable. I think there was another way to deal with that. That's kind of your scourge is bad, not yours. You're tanking way too much damage there as well. I would have left these two cooldowns. I'd now be very scared because you're on your last proc of so many mantras. I wouldn't try and re-res this. This is a misplay if you try and re-res this. Uh, okay, your, your ally did it too, so I, I was wrong there. I wouldn't have tried that, and I probably would have missed that up. I think you played better than me there, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't have gone for it. I would have known, but this guy was very aggressively minded as well. I don't know. If, if I was in comms with the guy and we, I knew that the other dude was going to commit to it, I would have thought about it. Otherwise, I would have just maintained pressure. Because, hold on, let's just turn back. Uh, sorry about all the rewinds here, guys. When the double down manifests, don't you have a down as well? So there you tank damage. Do you have a down? Yeah, you do. I would have been on this. I wouldn't have tried to res this. I would have pressured this. There is a, there's a thing in the game, right, which is... Um, uh, how, do, how do I articulate this? If no enemy is on your Scourge, he's not a priority to res anymore. Just as if no enemy is on this body, he's not a priority to stomp anymore. Does that make sense? Unless it's like a warrior, right? Uh, in the heat of a team fight, because the warrior might vengeance and do things. So, um, based on where everyone moves, my instinct is not to look at this. My instinct is to cleave the shit out of that. Turns out both teams tunnel visioned the reses. That's why you get this so quick. Because you get a double res with no cleave. The cleave that is coming, I think you've got a necro axe attacking you. You instead of the body. So, you know. Um, now everybody's back up. And sort of the fight just reset. That wouldn't have happened in my game, I don't think. Because I think players would have had different instincts. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, in any case, the fight's still on. Everything to play for. Your side node is doing well. You have sides. This is now an excellent fight. Can I just say, now that this is flipped... I don't even care about the win that much anymore. I wouldn't even go that deep on this because we don't need this anymore. Holding it Newt and winning the team fight is such an insane victory for your team. It's unreal. And you managed to get it, right? Um, but you're winning because of victories on sides right now. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to go deep with this. So now looking for further rotations, I'd actually be looking at the red gates already to see who's coming out. In fact, you were looking towards your own spawn there, pointlessly. I don't think there was any reason to do that. I might have been mistaken there. But yeah, I think you're turned around on knowing which is close and which is far right now. This is nice. I'd give him star five as well, in theory. Yeah, so this, I actually really don't like what you're doing right now. I really don't like what you've done. I, I understand, like, one thing to support this. But what you've done, and I'm going to rewind again, okay? So the fight ends. Let's see what information you have about respawns and where people might be coming. You're looking over there, then you instantly turn around. You haven't registered any information from enemy respawn. You look at your own spawn and don't see anything. You look, you take a brief glance, maybe, and now you're looking here. Another brief glance, you're not really looked, and now you're walking off. 
There could easily be someone coming right behind you and debunking this instantly right now. And it doesn't punish you here, it looks like, for now. But that could. Like, this is really my back's up a little bit here. I don't like this play. Even with that body, I don't even know how much res that body's got right now. So I'm very concerned. I would have swung around and looked at least for a second. Because can you imagine if that node gets neutralized again straight away? Now that you've lost sides again. Anyway, so you get the kill. I still feel kind of odd about mid right now. The Rev's now dealing with it for you. And I appreciate that you're you're focusing on mechanics of this fight. This guy, like, didn't he just ignore a free neutralization and a free res? This, this, this enemy that just came in? Anyway, so yeah, you're taking the fight on the road and um, free pressure where you can get it. This sustains your two cap. I actually love the positioning now. Now that everything's gone okay, your revs there, your team's trickling through. I'm, I'd be a little bit concerned uh, about going too deep. Your ally's going very deep. The revs going very deep. So now, obviously, you can push too. You've left your necro here. There's a lot of pressure on the necro right now to make sure that that doesn't get debunked by the time the warrior comes in. This could be a really nice maneuver from your whole team right now. If I see this warrior stands here, I love it. I love everything. The entire team pushes, you win, you win the whole game. Because you have a back motor standing. But let's see if the, the warrior turns it into a full zerg. As for your, your fight mechanics, it's good. I like your positioning. You're not going too deep. It's good that the warrior is standing in the right place. This isn't bad. And now you get to move in. The warrior takes his 1v1 in mid. I think F3 was a waste there. The enemy team's out counter-rotating you here. Again, you cap this, man. I'm really sorry. You're leaving, and I think you want your rev to stay. You're the one that caps this. Uh, okay, the rev's ported forwards. Do you realize? Are you going to turn around? You're just leaving it neutral? Okay, your warrior made a mistake here as well. Probably should have just held it. So you've lost the whole map again now. I think you should have been capped. I didn't think you were necessary for this kill here. Um, but you are getting value here, obviously. You're wiping them. The enemy team had an interesting thing there where they had a lot of movement to do and a lot of fighting to do at once. And so you get to punish them for that. This is pretty nice. I think the build feels quite low impact to me. I, I mean, maybe that's unfair of me. It's a firebrand, so it gets so much like value and like just baked in utility and stuff. But I feel like as far as doing damage, um, I wish I had a little more. Like this doesn't feel like very good cleave. Also, there's no point to attack that. I wouldn't be attacking that there. So you're about to finally take the lead and on the back of another four kills for your team. In fact, did you just quad uh, penta kill them? I think you've wiped their entire team and you have a three cap. One of your players is pinging a warning pin at close, but I don't think that's necessary. If someone's re re recognized a threat to close, leave the warrior there. The rest of you should be going to regroup with your guardian right now. And um, I don't think you need to be at mid. I think you could have left a long time ago. These allies that are here with you would have been holding this instead. There you go. Now, the Guardian has been forced to leave because none of you moved. You were way too slow. Hitting this body, not moving. Everything about that was way too slow. You could have been there with that Guardian. This is an unnecessary neutralization. Unnecessary full cap. Unnecessary free damage on, on that guy. You could have moved. Just still looking in the wrong way. I don't think you're looking at the minimap ever. So, now you've noticed that this is going on. And uh, so now you leave. I'm, I would probably have uh, a camera behind to make sure that Necro knows what he's doing that I've left on the node. I would also look to the right. What's going on on the right? I didn't really uh, register that information, so I really feel like I want that there. This is nice. I like the CC uh, chains that you can do. You did a lot of CC chains into the F1 CC chain. You're holding them in the uh, uh, F1. I feel like the skill ordering could be a little bit different so that your CCs are all keeping them in symbols and stuff. This is a very road-oriented map. A uh, 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 match and their big nodes. I can see why your build is so much stronger on point, right? Where the symbols can do a lot of stuff. So your team started dying from behind. You're not really fighting for an objective here. Now that it's exploded here and your scourge is down again, it's time to get on there and, and use some of your hyd hybrid support. That's exactly what you do. So that's good. I like these heals. You, you go for a res that... I don't know whether I would have done this, but your ally's doing it. I would splash a mantra over this guy. Yeah, I think this this res was a really bad idea. The enemy team got a, such a juicy knockback there as well. Can you get the rally? Yeah, with the axe swap. Oh, you will get the rally. This is really amazing. Nice rally there. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. Wait, hold on. What? I don't understand this game. Hold on. Let's rewind. So your scourge is down. Your firebrand is down. But they don't have a tag on this? Or is it the other way around? This guy doesn't have a tag on them. Let's see what the kill ordering is. The hollow got pulled. That's really good. Stops his cleave. We have to watch really closely, guys. This down, this down, and this down. Ready? Okay, so your guys died first. Oh my god, this, this, the footage went so horrible there. Your guys died first. You were just fortunate that that Revenant hadn't hit any of them. 
You got some really nice extra damage here. Look at the pressure. This I take it back. It's just kind of spiky pressure on this build, right? Like, that's kind of cool. All right, so you're now out of mantras. You got no stun break available. I would be kiting. Yeah, you just died. I, here, I wouldn't have gone deep. I would have started kiting because you've just, you've, you had zero utility skills left. Grinding the fight is kind of nice. Now you're going to get neutralized. This is going to get really hairy. If this revenant kills your warrior, I think you lose the game. Your allies aren't respawning into uh, support it. You're going to be too late. And the plus is going to come in. The enemy team actually is making an extremely aggressive play that I agree with right now. They're leaving mid. Because uh, they know, kill that warrior. Get that neutralization on waterfall with the big plus. So your necromancer changed his mind and went, your decision. Let's talk about what you should do. Well, your rev died over at far trying to escape. I don't think you have any opportunities at this gate again. I think you should have gone close. I think you you need to win this fight big time. Um, I'm not sure whether plus one this. Well, hold on. Here's an interesting thing. Uh, your guardian just pinged this kill here. So at this point, I would actually turn around. Because the only reason he's ever pinging that is that it's low and disengaging. Or that he can win it. Or that he wants support, right? It's the only reason he pings that. Unless he's just mindless about it. So, instead of being here, you could have now been towards mid for a free neutralization or taking that. Instead, you're going for the big regroup fight, but a little bit late. This is a weird game. What What is going on here? What, what, how is it the two allies are dead and one of them's down? Cleaving this quickly is nice and didn't actually cost many cooldowns. Uh, you stay to cap. This is good. You let the Revenant push up. He regroups with your warrior and your necro. Everyone's feeding and dying, though. I, I, I think you might have lost the game because the enemy team has a bit too much of a snowball. Because this is going to full cap. Uh, the best thing that you can do in this game is aggressively try to neutralize this and then push for far straight away. That's what I would do. I wouldn't stand on this. I wouldn't watch for any... Even if you get decapped here, I would, I would push for this neutralization. Here's an opportunity as well. You could neutralize this right now. And you're not... <sighs> Ooh, the throw. The throw. Oh, no. Get on the note. Okay, this guy's now moved on, so it's not there anymore. Did you have time? Even if you didn't have time, the play was to be down there. You're getting decapped anyway, so your positioning on here isn't relevant. And now you've walked off after getting decapped. You just lost the game then. The only reason to stay on that cliff was to rotate back in time before even a decap. Uh, which also meant you had to be watching your camera uh, over on the right. Instead, you got distracted by the fight, and then you commit. You've overcommitted. You're not going to get there in time. It's over that for that now. You have to win the mid fight. It's too late to to rotate back. You don't have the speed you want. You strike me as a player that that's used to having more mobility. The guy takes the full cap. You're not going to win this one v one in time, and you haven't done enough at mid. So unfortunately, that's the end of the game there. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I think the only win condition in those last moments was to get the neutralization in mid. Use like your shield five to knock someone off if you had to. Let's say you stood on that node, you took the free T cap value, and then you like managed to get a good knock at the end after a dodge roll. You could have neutralized this and then walked back, and you'd at least be in it a little bit more. That's the highest value you could have been there. You get a knock here, but it's not going to be... No I can't imagine you ever winning this. That's my prediction that you'll never, ever neutralize this in time. Because he can just chain mitigation for too long. And here's a plus now as well. Yeah, the enemy team got a snowball in the middle there due to a bit of an unfortunate positioning and misplay. Uh, I don't think it was totally on you. This, to me, feels like one of those like middle tier builds that does a lot of stuff, but not an enough of one thing in abundance. But I might be wrong. I thought you had some really nice mechanics and interesting plays there. It's really unfortunate to see you drop back to gold. You could feel that people knew a bit better what to do there. There was definitely a moment, even for your team, where they played better in the middle there. But uh, yeah, that's how I would have taken that game. That's the different stuff I would have gone with. Uh, unfortunately, as far as mechanical advice and specific build stuff, I, I, I can't give you too much more. Uh, except there are a couple of times where you like unloaded some CC and some bursts without waiting for a dodge first. I would try to uh, look for that. Don't necessarily count every dodge and all that, but wait for some kind of evade before you push some damage out. That's what I would say. Uh, unfortunate game, but a really cool one to watch. I really appreciate the footage. Thanks very much. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, submit more footage if you guys want to do more games. Thanks for the Guardian game. See you next time, guys.